Over the years, you've known some of the most colorful and unique creators on this planet. Off the top of your head, which ones do you miss the most? Well, I miss uh, Al and Zoot very much because they were very close personal friends. I miss Miles a lot because uh, we had a bond, even though we didn't see each other, you know, all the time. But whenever we did, uh, there was a certain feeling. Uh, and, uh, well, naturally, Bird was missed from the moment he left. But, the, you know, so many of, the, uh, of, the, of them, because a lot of them I developed, if not deep friendships, uh, strong relationships. Bud Johnson, I felt, to me, he was like my uncle. Um, I did a lot of traveling with him when they had the JPJ Quartet. And we was doing liaison work for Johns Manville, playing concerts and and doing uh, what they call rap sessions then uh, in cities where Johns Manville had plants. So the JPJ uh, would play. Then they talked to the student, you know, the the students at the at the school, and I was the liaison man. So I got tight with all those guys. Oliver Jackson, Dill Jones, who was a marvelous uh, raconteur and uh, conversationalist, besides being a very good pianist, and Bill Pemberton, the bass player. That was that was a great experience. But uh, you know, I'll probably forget, you know, in trying to remember everybody. But yeah. But a lot of uh, a lot of people, Dexter. I mean. Dexter was uh, is very missed. Great personality, uh, yeah. great wit. How does the music come from the man? You know these people so well. You have a consciousness of their them as people and their music. Is there a relationship between the two? There has to be. If if they're a true musician, they're playing themselves playing their souls, playing their thoughts, their, their whole mindset. Uh, so I think there is a relationship. But I think some people who couldn't express themselves the way, the way they may want to, have wanted to uh, in, in, uh, verbally could get it across in their music by implication. You'd have to fill in some of the blanks, but uh, you got an idea of, of people. Not that necessarily everybody who played great was a nice guy, but in general, I found uh, most of the jazz musicians that I met and hung out with and, and knew are pretty much uh, Great people. Ira, you've accomplished so much in your life. You've touched so many lives. Your legacy is going to exist as long as people are listening to this music and reading about it. You recently turned 80. What haven't you done that you look forward to that you would like to do? I'd like to write my memoir. Uh, part of it would be some of the things we're talking about today. Of course, a big part of it. But there are would also be, you know, growing up, uh, sports, which has been very important to me, particularly hockey, uh, as a fan, as a player, as a coach, uh, baseball, comedy, uh, which is I've always been a big fan of, uh, knowing Lenny Bruce. Um, and just uh, growing up in an era of radio and and movies of uh, before television and traveling through jazz, I've been able to travel to Africa, Japan, Europe, of course, uh, the Caribbean, Russia. 
I mean, it's amazing when you look back on it, but it's all through jazz and the many friends I've made in these countries and the great experiences because in these countries, jazz is considered a lot more, with a lot more respect than it is here. So a lot of the performances I heard in these countries were very inspired because of the musicians knowing uh, and getting the reaction from the audiences. Some amazing nights. I mean, uh, Sonny playing in Perugia one year, outdoor concert, and the people just genuinely, not selfishly, but genuinely wanting more, more and more and more, and Sonny just giving and giving and giving like he can do. I mean, some amazing nights like that.